Assalamu alaikum and good day to you. So today I'm going to um, actually talk about um, protein synthesis inhibitors. But before that, um, let me just go through quickly what um, we have covered together in the first two classes, the first two lectures in penicillin. Yeah. So um, if I can uh, remind you again, um, if you get if you forget anything else or everything else. Um, these are the chemistries and things that I want you to remember or know. Yeah, uh, these are essential for FAR two four one. Yeah, the firstly about penicillin. Yeah, I think we only stopped at about the chemistry, but make sure that you um, in the chemistry there's there are three mechanisms <clears throat> in chemistry uh, that you need to know. First is the the, the uh, you know deactivation mechanism. Yeah. Uh, also, um, the mechanism for hyper that will actually ex explain the hyper sensitivity of uh, penicillin in some uh, patients, and also uh, how does the shape and also its ring strain yeah helps in in this action in its action in inhibiting um, bacterial. Uh, infection yeah it's very important those three things are very important at the same time don't forget about the improvements um, of penicillin because the first penicillin which is penicillin G is not even though it's fantastic but it's not um, it's not good for uh, oral use so you have to know what are the improvements made to the side chain of penicillin to make it better to make it more stable yeah, in in uh, as an oral drug, especially, and uh, for carbaldosporin, yeah, it's similar. The the chemistry is very similar to to penicillin. Um, I go up to the fourth generation, yeah. Um, make sure also what are the, the improvement, yeah, uh, needed or have been done to carbaldosporin, yeah. That, that is the important things you need to know. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day to all of you. Yeah. So let's come back to protein synthesis inhibitors and their chemistry. So this uh, lecture is licensed under the CC BY uh, NCND. It's known for non commercial and it shouldn't be uh, any derivatives coming out of this work. Yeah? So um, let's have a look at where the um, antibiotics uh, or antibacteria um, works um, as a protein synthesis inhibitors. Yeah? If you um, are aware of the protein synthesis, it's actually a process to create enzymes um, or other uh, protein-based uh, compounds in the body. So it usually consists of uh, the protein factory or we call ribosomes and which will actually um, then translate the messages from the mRNA. So in this case, um, yeah, um, there are five um, drug compounds or anti antibiotic that will actually um, uh, will be covered in this lecture. The first one would be tetracycline. Second would be, let's just have a look to the next lecture. Second would be on uh, macrolides. Yeah. The third one is lincomycin. The fourth one is tetracycline. And the fifth one is aminoglycoside. So let's go back to where it would actually uh, act. So uh, for tetracycline, it will actually act in the first stage of the translation whereby it will block the uh, 30S um, tRNA, uh, 30S, yeah, tRNA yeah, um, uh, binding site. Therefore, when it actually blocks the, T, uh, the 30S ribosome, yeah, what happens is that um, the tRNA carrying, carrying the amino acids cannot enter anymore and therefore the protein synthesis stops at the first stage actually. Yeah? The uh, chloramphenicol uh, will block at the chain transfer, meaning that um, I think it will be on the from the second stage going on the, the, the third stage whereby um, there's a growing chain of protein 
but um, and Gram-Francicol will block that pro uh, peptide chain transfer. In other words, the, the, the peptide chain cannot move beyond that. Therefore, again, protein synthesis stops. Yeah. Um, so we got a very short protein uh, synthesis, which is, in other words, it will it will cause um, dysfunction of protein uh, that is intended to be of a certain function. Yeah? And then you have macrolides and also a minor glycosides, which actually will block um, it, the similar site. With this, will actually block at a translocation site. Yeah. Um, therefore, again, it, these two uh, will block towards the end, the later stage of um, uh, protein synthesis. Okay. So um, just bear in mind one more thing is that. Um, in terms of specificity or selectivity of this um, uh, protein synthesis, it depends very much on the differences in the sizes uh, of the ribosomes. Um, in bacteria, is 50s and 30s, whereas in um, human, yeah, in uh, eukaryotes, would be uh, the ribosomes would actually be of the uh, two sub two sixty and forty s sixty s and forty s subunits, so making up to eighty s ribosomes. So the different sizes will confer selectivity and also uh, specificity. Okay, to um, these, let's have a look uh, at the, the first one, uh, amphenicols. So amphenicols, um, they are actually. If you see, this is a general structure of amphenicols. It is made up of an aromatic ring, yeah? um, the aromatic ring linked to a three carbon with two diols. Yeah? These diols are important. And then the next one is, uh, it is the second carbon, yeah? carbon number two, is linked to an amide. Yeah? So these structures are consistent throughout these uh, amphenicol series yeah? of protein synthesis inhibitors. And at the terminal end, the X and the Y are usually um, the the Y are usually consistent. They are the di dichloro uh, moiety, and the X are actually modified accordingly. So in here you can see the uh, chloramphenicol, a uh, nitro, Cet cetophenicol is acetal, yeah, aceto uh, acetal, and the thiamphenicol are actually the methyl sulfonyl uh, moiety. Okay, um, they are isolated. These uh, amphenicols are actually naturally occurring and isolated from Streptomyces species. Yeah? There are four possible isomers, but only four. Only four, sorry. There are four possible isomers, only one, sorry. Only one are active. Yeah? The d 3 o chloramphenicol is active. The R, the 1R, 2R configuration. Where does the configuration comes in? Is actually at this two, yeah, two position. One and two are are the active ones. Yeah, um, these carbonyl are actually um, they have serious adverse effects. So they are used in in hospitals uh, are a bit limited. Yeah, um, they are usually the last resort for any anti-infective therapy. Yeah, um, the adverse effects are usually uh, related to the Nitro group here. That's why if we go back to the uh, here, that's why uh, they change, they modify the nitro group in chloramphenicol to acetal or methyl sulfonyl group to reduce the adverse effects. Yeah. So that's where the chemistry comes in. All right. Um, so let's have a look at the uh, you know where do chloramphenicol uh, bind in the um, in the uh, ribosome, yeah? uh, on the structure uh, of chloramphenicol, the important functionality that binds to the uh, ribosomes would be the nitro group, definitely, yeah? the two diols, the ketone, and also one of the chloro group. Yeah? And it binds to 50S ribosome, and the mode of action is actually bacteriostatic. Yeah, so let's have a look at the uh, so chloramphenicol call actually block at the peptide uh, chain transfer. All right. Okay. So um, 
So again, all the functionalities are important. Uh, you can actually replace with uh, other um, groups, or the natural groups can be replaced with other electron withdrawing groups. But it, you know, it's not that active. It's going to be you know, be that active. Yeah. So far, the the best would be the uh, acetal and also the methyl sulfonyl groups. Yeah. Um, another thing as well, what happens is that. Um, where you have foreign and um what happens with with it is that it can actually also um, be made um, uh, resistant by the uh, enzymes produced by the bacteria. Uh, for example, um, you know the nitro group can be reduced further uh, by the enzyme. Um, you know, bacteria, chromophonicol, acetyl transferases will actually acetylate the hydroxy group, these two um, hydroxy group, the 1, 3, uh, sorry, 1, 3 uh, hydroxy group. Therefore, it actually made it into 1, 3, the acetyl, acetyl um, chromophonicol. So once these two binding site are being um, blocked, uh, change, sorry, change to an acetyl group, two acetyl groups, 1, 3, uh, diacetyl, uh, what happens is that they no longer can bind to the ribosomes. So um, having this, um, uh, you know, um, OH group also, um, in a sense, uh, doesn't really help towards the um, resistance. Yeah. So again, um, because of the in general, because of the adverse effects of chlorophenicol or amphenicol's group, um, because of the nitro group, um, you know, the, the, there are changes made, the modification made, especially in the ast uh, ch change the nitro to acetyl acetyl group, and change the uh, and and also to methyl sulfonyl group. That helps in a sense, but it's still a last resort to in terms of the anti infectives yeah? There's a question. Yeah. Can you predict the major bio transformation pathway for chlorophenicol? Yeah. Just so the idea is that if you have a look at the um, have a look at the structure, yeah, can you think, can you actually predict the major bio transformation um, pathway for this particular uh, drug. Yeah, you have learned about phase one, phase two um, in uh, metabolic metabolism in uh, in the first year, second semester. So try to think of what could be the major uh, metabolic pathway for this um, drug.